On the breakfast, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control and CDC says it's on a high alert following the outbreak of MacBook virus in Ghana. Also on the breakfast, the Super Falcons boycott training in protest of unpaid allowances ahead of their match play with Zambia. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. It's a beautiful Friday morning. Welcome right here to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. And some people will say, thank God it's Friday, but not to almost everyone because, I mean, work would always continue. I am Messi Boko. We start our conversation with a top trending. And on our top trending this morning, JAM approves court of MAC for polytechnics and university. That's been getting Nigerians talking and reacting in different spaces. The conversation is one and the same. And people are saying, hey, we're going down. Uh, our educational system is just dwindling. It's just going down. We can't, you know, be... I get a cut of mark prior to this time. Cut of points would be from 200, 220, 210, and what have you, uh, 190. Uh, now we're looking at uh, what's the cut of again? 140. And the reaction is just universal that uh, we're losing it in terms of our education. But it's important to note that you know the minimum the minimum cut of mark for admission. Uh, that's been put out for 2022 and 2023 academic section. Uh, this decision was not just arrived at. So you had stakeholders, for instance, the Joint Admi uh, Admission and Matriculation Board, heads of tertiary institutions. That would mean that you had vice chancellors of universities, rectors of polytechnics, and provosts of colleges of education. They were all, including the minister, uh, of education who presided over this meeting for that approval of 140 as the MAC for admission into the university and 100 for polytechnics. But however, now one part I think that a lot of Nigerians did not or haven't really paid attention to is that institutions have the right to fix the court of MAC even up to 220. So, I mean, Everybody seemed to be talking about the fact that, hey, the cut of point is at 140, uh, but no one is also paying attention to uh, the clause that you have, that institutions have the right, you know, to fix uh, the cut of mark up to 220. That would mean that it's okay for you to score uh, 140, one, but you can't go below 140, especially for universities, 200 and what have you, but you get to the universities and what if the universities is peg, you know, uh, the cut of mark at 200 and 220 or 300 and what have you then so it's okay for you to make jam but getting into the university is still very dependent on the university and the colleges of education as well as uh, you know the polytechnics so should we worry about anything but uh, all the persons are saying this like it might just be another means of generating revenue uh, you know for government uh, that's what's been said okay we move away from that. Another on a top trending, uh, it's also getting a lot of people talking, might be dominating the papers this morning, is the fact that the federal government is considering a ban of Okada nationwide, and that's to curb the insecurity challenges that the country is faced with. And so uh, you, th this was actually the outcome of a security meeting that was held, and we have the output that, hey, uh, the government is saying in order, they might be considering uh, the fact that there, there should be a ban on Okada nationwide. Now, let's look at the fact that uh, Okada, as it's popularly called and known, in different parts of the state has been banned. For instance, in 2008 in River State in Potakot. I mean, for some reason, the issue of militants and what have you, it was restricted. Kanu, Kaduna, Akwaibom State, Lagos, you also have Cross River State, uh, one reason or the other. But you also need to understand that in this, uh, as it is, you have suburbs, you have satellite towns where vehicles do not ply. And then these roads are roads that lead to feeder road. 
But another thing that was also mentioned, again, is the issue of, uh, you know, security, the issue of mining. Now, mining was another issue saying that this terrorists actually are uh, involved in activities of mining and also make a living which funds them. And so uh, the reason why the government is considering this is that it would help, you know, reduce the activities across board. But uh, people have not really embraced this because we understand that there are satellite towns, there are suburbs, you have uh, feeder roads. Uh, how, when you tell people not to, when you ban Okada across, I mean, for instance, if something's to go by and Okada has been banned or motorcycles been banned, what happens with people who live in these satellite towns, who live in these suburbs where the only means of transportation and transporting their goods would be having to um, use the motorcycle or use the bikes or Okada, whatever you want to use to get to their location. But on the other hand, the issue of mining is also very critical because there are several reports about uh, from intergovernment, you know, and uh, independent think tanks talking about the activities of miners. So you have people who are into small scale mining in the West African region and, you know, other parts of, of Africa. And so Central Africa, so West Africa and Central Africa, there's been several reports from intergovernmental agencies and independent, uh, you know, personnel or personalities, these reports have been ongoing. That there's a correlation, strong connection with mining and the activities of terrorism or terrorists. And so there's in connection because this group of persons actually get into, uh, you know, the mining activity, but at the end of the day, they do not, it's illegal. And so you have this terrorists come together to collaborate and that becomes a lot. Mining is a gold mine for every you know, it's a global thing across board. Mining is a, a serious issue. And these persons have understood uh, collaborating with illegal miners. But the question here is, do we know those who are involved in illegal mining? Do we know the identities of these terrorists? We understand. So it's not a new thing that mining, but is it okay for you to say you want to ban bikes? Does that solve the problem? People have raised question of the NIN. Uh, you know, the same linkage and communication. Some people have been very sarcastic about it and say if the government is bent on considering banning bikes or the Okada for nationwide just to co-op the activities of this uh, terrorist, then it would be okay to say, let's ban life. Let's also ban communication. Let's ban mobile phones. Let's ban some of these things. Uh, a lot of persons have not really embraced this idea. But our fingers are crossed, and let's see how all of, all of this pans out. Away from that, Joe Biden tests positive for COVID-19. We're talking about, you know, the president of the United States of America. And that's big because... Uh, Joe Biden has, uh, all those time, uh, in all of this, he's talked about that uh, vaccination or COVID-19 is for the unvaccinated. It therefore means that he believed that if you are vaccinated, uh, then there's no possibility of you contracting the virus. So it's for those who are not. But there's been a lot of argument that being vaccinated does not mean that you cannot still, I mean, you cannot contract the virus. Uh, it's just that it reduces, you know, um, the severity of whatever effect it would have on you uh, when you juxtapose that or compare that to when you're not vaccinated. And there's a lot buzzing, especially from the United States. People have reacted differently. We've also seen persons who are wishing him to get well soon because they cannot imagine anything happening to Joe Biden. But um, it just goes to show that uh, despite the fact that countries and uh, countries of the world and have actually relaxed the restriction. I mean, all of the uh, protocols, for instance, travel uh, restrictions, all of that has been relaxed and what have you. And some people have been very careless about uh, the non-pharmaceutical uh, protocols that we observe, washing hands, wearing your nose mask, and what have you. It's just a reminder that the virus is still with us. It hasn't gone. And it's important that we protect ourselves at all costs. And that's the size of it on our top trend in this morning. We take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at the front pages of our national dailies. Please stay with us.